Hey there YouTube, this is Hoppa Chick Creative and I want to share a couple of projects that I finished. I still need to get a setup so that I can actually start doing some tutorials. Right now I'm just using my phone's camera and so it's tough to um, just, you know, be doing arts and crafts one-handed. So I am right now just showing things that I've done because I can do that pretty easily with one hand. So the first piece is a mixed media piece, and I used a piece of watercolor paper. I believe the brand is Reeves, and it's student grade watercolor paper. I have uh, it had really high ratings on Amazon, and I found it to be fantastic paper. Um, there's a little bit of um, some warping of the paper when I started applying ink to it, but for the most part it really takes the ink well and the water well, and I'm very happy with it and amazed that it's it's student grade. So this first piece, what I did was I prepped a surface with white gesso, and I used Liquitex Basics acrylic gesso for that. The image is cut from a book called The Unicorn Tapestries. Um, I grew up watching The Last Unicorn. You guys may know that movie. And there was a painting that they show right at the beginning of that movie that I never forgot. So I bought a book that contained the original tapestries of those paintings, and it's actually a whole series. But it also, it's a humongous book. Um, sort of a muse museum type book and it has lots and lots of different images in it from that time period, a lot of history, and it also tells the tale of the last unicorn um, and the unicorn capture and there's a story about a queen in the book as well. Um, this woman I really just loved this image and I loved the background and I wanted to do something that was soft and black and white up against a lot of color. So after prepping the surface with the white gesso, I let that dry. It took about maybe 15 minutes and it wasn't even completely dry yet, but started spraying and you can see in the background um, I used Ranger's Mini Misters to spray Lumiere paints mixed with water so you can see a lot of the shimmer. And then I wanted more of a droplet effect so I got out my eyedropper and that's where you can see those drops that are sort of starting to flow into the surface. And in the background are two cut out images of a hand carved stamp. I made of a feather and the feathers are not prominent I wouldn't say they're more background but they give dimension because I didn't glue them completely down I wanted some of the edges of the feathers to stick up and give it more of a three-dimensional effect this down here below is just um, a handmade paper flower and I stamped it. It was um, just plain purple printer paper and I stamped it with some favorite stamps so that's where you can see the black and then I covered it with a gloss uh, coat of Mod Podge. So that really sealed it. I love that Mod Podge is a sealant and a glue because I also used it to glue it down and as you can see, you know, I'm picking it up. It's it's very firm. It's staying on there. Um, and I I think the the gloss is subtle, but but nice. It gives a nice effect and um, just gives a little extra pop to that flower. And then this is just a leaf cut out of I think some multimedia paper, probably from. Um, my, my book of Canon multimedia paper. 
painted it with using the um, a combination of Lumiere paints and Smooch. I will show you Smooch. This little guy. It looks like a um, kind of like a little miniature nail polish bottle. So this pretty little violet color and it has shimmer and um, the Lumiere has shimmer as well so I believe after that I took okay yeah I'm seeing glitter on the leaf too so I had this this cute little um, set of glitter paints and I added some white glitter on top for just a subtle glittery effect that you can kind of see in the camera picking up a little bit of it. I didn't want it to be too glittery. I usually like more of a shimmery effect rather than glitter. And I also used a little bit of the Viva Decor Inca Gold in copper. Love this product. Um, it's made with beeswax and very easy to apply. It dries very fast. I've used it on both multimedia projects and on jewelry, and I've noticed that it stays really well, with or without a sealant. Um, I've never tried Rub and Buff. I've heard this compared to Rub and Buff, and don't really feel a need to try, you know, any other um, metallic, um, you know, paste or anything like that, because I just am in love with this product and. This is a trial size. I also have some of the larger sizes. There's one that I have in a really nice purple. And I think I'm on back order for an old silver Inca Gold color that is beautiful. This one is just silver. And don't know how well you can see that with the glare, but it's a, a nice bright pure silver. And the old silver looks more antique and is a little darker. So it'll have a nice, it'll provide a nice option. Okay, so this is absolutely an upcycled piece of art. Um, if you can recognize what this frame is made out of, it was actually a takeout container. And it just made such a perfect... Um, shadow box because it had this dimension as you can see and then I used the crackle paint effect using Elmer's glue I learned about it on YouTube there's lots and lots of tutorials on it basically just laid down a layer of lavender acrylic paint just a real basic acrylic paint I believe it was either folk art or craft smart from Michaels waited for that to dry then liberally spread Elmer's glue all over the surface, waited a little while until the Elmer's was drying but still wet and tacky. I've noticed that that's given me the best effect. I also heard a tip that if you use your paintbrush and move the glue and the paint in different directions, you'll tend to get cracks that go off in different directions, which is nice. And this little image in here was made from a handmade stencil, and I used my um, my jelly plate from Jelly Arts to um, use the stencil, and I you know just used a um, a dauber to pounce the black paint onto the surface of the jelly plate, and I had already created this background with another stencil. I believe that was with a leaf pattern stencil and just continued to layer until I liked the mixed up look of the background and then uh, put her face on over that and I've been using Krylon um, Krylon clear sealer I believe and it is matte some of the um, gloss of the paint and the shimmer that I used a little bit of in the, on the paper you're seeing here still shows through, but I wanted more of a little bit of a matte effect on the frame itself, so it's 
pretty happy. This is, you know, very much an experiment, and I liked how it turned out. I like that it's recycled, and I encourage you to recycle as much as you can. There's so much we can do with takeout containers and packages you receive from the tissue paper, um, the bubble wrap, the cardboard itself. You can tear away and get corrugated cardboard, which can add some really nice texture to pro projects and I'm hoping to do a tutorial soon on the burned paper brown bag effect on corrugated cardboard because I liked how it turned out between the bubbles of the glue that created a crater effect mixed in with the ridges of the corrugated cardboard. Really nice. And by the way that burned glue idea I got originally from Cool to Craft. Um, love the ladies over there and so many wonderful ideas that I get on their channel. Um, they use Aline's original tacky glue. I just don't happen to have that here on hand so I used Elmer's for the burned glue which also works but I'm also a fan of Aline's so either one. Either one you can find. Um, you can even find them at a drugstore or grocery store. So those are a couple of projects. Uh, hope it gave you some inspiration. Please comment if you have any comments or questions and wishing you a crafty and happy Sunday. Thanks a lot. Bye.